everyone! Welcome to the Jada and Stitches show. Today we're going to show you how to sew in a lining, a fabric lining, to an existing crochet or even knit scarf. I made this scarf using granny squares from our granny square game and the channel family voted on navy blue polar fleece for the lining. A very soft and cozy addition, I must say. For a project like this, I recommend polar fleece, flannel, flannelette, or even t-shirt material. All of those fabrics feel really nice against your skin, but more importantly, they don't fray when you cut them. You don't want material that frays because it adds a whole lot of work to a project like this. The purpose of today's video is to show you how to easily line the scarf using some really basic sewing methods. You also need basic sewing tools too. I'm just doing hand sewing, so a needle and thread is all you need. Essentially, all you want to do is cut a piece of fabric that is a little longer and a little wider than your scarf, fold the edges of the fabric in, pin it along the back side of your scarf, and then sew all the way around into place. It's very simple, don't overthink it. <laughs> Adding the lining is pretty straightforward, but little things can pop up as you work. So that's the purpose of today's video. I'm going to show you my entire process from start to finish. So let's grab our scarves, we'll grab our lining fabric, we'll head on over to the craft table, and we'll stitch it up together. Easily find all of our crochet tutorials. Type youtube.com slash Jada and Stitches into your web browser and we'll see you there. We've got our scarves, we've got our lining material. I'm using a nice dark blue polar fleece. This is a non-fraying material, so I highly recommend that for this kind of a project. You want a pair of scissors that are good for cutting fabric. You need some thread. We're going to double up the thread we use. I'm using a nice light green because I feel like it matches some of the colors in my scarf. Plus you'll be able to see what I'm doing as I sew my lining to my scarf. And you want a sewing needle and some straight pins. You can also use sewing clips if you've got clips that can sort of take quite a lot of thickness in them. Uh, but sewing pins, straight pins are great too. And once you've got all that together, we can get started. You want to begin by laying your fabric out flat and putting your scarf down on top of it. You want to be able to see at least two centimeters or three quarters of an inch of your lining fabric sticking out beyond the edge of your scarf. And you want to have that all the way around. Then you're just going to cut the same distance away from the edge of your scarf. We're doing this because we want what's called salvage so that we can turn this part of our lining under and that will just make for a nice finished edge. So you wanna make sure as you're cutting your lining that you've got at least two centimeters to three quarters of an inch of salvage around the entire length of your scarf. Chances are good you'll have to cut several strips of fabric from your rectangle or square, the kind of shape that your fabric comes in, in order to get a nice long length to suit the length of your scarf. That's no big deal. You can just cut, a, cut your first length of fabric that is the right width around your scarf and then lay it on top of your fabric and cut another piece um, as long as you need it to be. But don't forget to add a little bit of that extra overhang so that you've got enough to create your seam. Because when you create a seam between two pieces of fabric, you use up a little bit of the length of the fabric. Now, this is a non-fraying fabric, so I could made a seam very close to the edge of both of them, and it doesn't matter because it's not going to, to fray on me. And of course, it looks nice and neat on the opposite side. And this is going to be the side that touches your skin. You're going to have your unfinished or your raw edges facing into the scarf. But of course, I'll show you what that looks like. Now I have one more little piece to add on to the end of my lining, and I'll show you how I made that seam by hand. In order to seam together a couple of pieces of lining fabric, lay one piece of fabric down right side facing up, and take the other piece of fabric right side facing back towards the first piece and lay them down on top of each other and match up the sides or the edge that you're going to sew across. And for me, that's this long edge right here. Next, you're going to cut a long piece of thread, thread up your needle, and you're going to bring both ends of the thread together. So this is called sort of double threading, or it kind of creates a double thickness of thread, which I like to use when I'm sewing something like polar fleece together. Bring both of your ends together as close as you can make them and then we're just going to create a little knot. I pinch the two ends between my thumb and forefinger, wrap it around my forefinger and just roll it off. Pinch it between my middle finger and my thumb and I pull down and I've got a pretty solid knot and that's not going anywhere. Next, if you feel you need to, you can pin the two pieces of fabric together 
I like to use straight pins that have a little knob on the end so I can kind of keep track of where they're at. Or if you're using clips, um, you can clip it along the edge where the two pieces of fabric meet. Um, the nice thing about polar fleece is that it's kind of grabby and it doesn't slip and slide around. So just three pins is enough to keep them from moving around. Then you just want to start sewing. You can take your first straight pin, get it out of the way, take your needle. I like to work from, you're going to kind of come from behind, bring it through both pieces of the fabric. Your knot should stop your yarn or your thread here from coming through. And I'm just going to go around the edge, one little whip stitch around the edge. And then I'm going to use what's called the straight or running stitch all the way across the edge of the two pieces of fabric about a centimeter down from the end. Now I'm using a very small bit of salvage because this is a non-fraying kind of fabric and it's not, I don't have to worry about sort of finishing off the seam nicely. Because polar fleece is kind of a thicker yarn, you're not going to be able to see your stitches. So I like to make them about a half a centimeter or less across and I just kind of keep laying my needle down as a guide to follow and that's all I'm going to do in and out back and forth through both pieces of fabric all the way across I'm just kind of eyeballing it it doesn't have to be perfect and this is going to take a little bit of time but it's kind of nice If you have Taylor's chalk, you could always draw yourself a nice straight line with a ruler. That helps to sort of give you something to follow. Or like I'm doing, just eyeball it. You want to stay about a centimeter away from the edge. As you come to each straight pin, just remove it and keep going. When you get across to the edge, even if your edges overlap a little bit, that's perfectly fine because this is all going to be hidden as we turn under our edges when we add it to our scarf. You just want to sew sort of through the edge a couple of times. So I usually just sort of go back and forth over the same spot a couple times. And then I make a little knot. So I'm going to slip my needle underneath one of the stitches. This is pretty small stuff. But you just want to make a loop with your thread, pass your needle through it, pull it fairly tightly, and then do it again in the same place. And if it doesn't feel strong enough, do it a third time. Once we've got our piece of lining all ready to go, we're gonna take our crocheted scarf and we're gonna lie it right side facing down on our work surface. So this is the right side of my scarf. So it's facing down, the wrong side is facing up. Then we're going to take our lining and we're going to take the right side. And so the right side of your lining is the one that has the nice neat seams, if there are any. That side faces up, the wrong side, the part with the seams that uh, you can feel and see, that is going to face into our scarf. And you're going to lay the whole thing down on top of your scarf so that you can't see your scarf. So this is going to take a little bit of fiddling. And don't worry, it's not like this is all set in stone. You're going to sort of feel your way around, make sure that there's overhang on both sides. And then you're gonna work your way down the entire length of the scarf. Once you've laid your entire lining, right side facing out on top of your scarf, you're going to start going around the entire external perimeter, so all four sides, and you're just gonna take your lining and you're just going to fold the edges in. So you're just going to pinch them in and then lay them back down so that it sits just inside the edge of your scarf. And where you have a seam, it might be a little bit thicker, so you can sort of split that seam, lay those two pieces of the seam down, pinch it down, and then you're going to take some straight pins or your clips and you're just going to pin it along the edge of your scarf and you're going to do that all the way across. So I like to sort of start just a little bit away from the edge of the corner and I'll do an entire edge first. So I make sure that I've, I just pinch this under. So you see what I'm doing? I'm just sort of like folding it under and then pinning it 
to the scarf. And that's just to keep the whole thing kind of in place as I work. And I'm going to do one whole side, then the whole bottom long side, and then I'm going to do the edges because you're going to have a little bit extra to fold in at the corners. So I like to do that last. Once you've folded over the edges of your long sides and pin them under, it's time to do the two ends. I like to sort of take out the corner pins and do these one at a time. And even as you're sewing, you can continue to sort of fiddle with your lining to make sure that it sort of sits along the edge of your scarf. So as it's pinned, you're just sort of, the pins are to hold it into place just so it doesn't move around too much on you. But as you sew, you can kind of pin it where it needs to go. There we go. So once again, I'm just sort of holding it in place with a few straight pins. And then I'm going to do the other end. There we go. So far, so good. Once you're ready to start sewing, I like to start in a corner and I like to do all my long sides first. So same thing, you're gonna double up your thread in your, your needle and make sure that the two ends are knotted together at the end. And then I like to just hook my needle underneath the inside of the lining and pull it through so that the knot is somewhat hidden. And then you have a couple of options. You can just pick up the inside of the yarn on your scarf so that you're not seeing any of your stitches showing through to the outside. And that's especially handy if you've got a very fine knit or a fine crocheted um, scarf. But my yarn is pretty thick and it's pretty colorful. So if I sew all the way through, so if I go all the way through to the outside of my crochet fabric and then skip over a bit and come back through. I can remove that little sewing pin. Remember when you're taking your pins out, put them directly into your pin cushion so that they don't get lost and you don't end up poking yourself <laughs> as you work. So I can work all the way sort of in and out, in and out. Same thing, I'm doing a straight stitch or a running stitch all the way back and forth along the edge of my scarf. Now if you don't like that running stitch look, this is another thing you can do. So I'm just going to bring my yarn back in. Now of course you're not going to see my sewing stitches on the other side of my fabric so I don't really mind using the running stitch. But if you wanted to do the tiny little whip stitch you could pick up a piece of the edge of your scarf and a piece of the edge of your lining. Make sure you get a good piece, chunk of it there. And then do a little miniature whip stitch all the way through, always going around and around in the same direction. And that way you'd have like a little tiny edging bit of stitching that runs between your lining and your scarf. But I'm going simple today and I think the running stitch is kind of cute. Plus I know if I sew back and forth through both pieces of my scarf and my lining, that I will definitely be connecting the two. So there won't be any question. See, I'm just coming right through the actual yarn and then all the way back again. And I'm just gonna keep looking back and forth on either side. So through the fabric, with the other side of my scarf and back. And I'm gonna try and keep my stitches, oh, a half, an, half a centimeter apart and a little on the longer side and that's because I'm dealing with some fairly thick polar fleece and some fairly thick yarn. And I'm just going to do this all the way down the first long side of my scarf. Remember, as you sew, you can always sort of reposition the curl or the turn of your fabric 
and you, you want to give yourself a little, you don't want to make it taunt, you want to give yourself a little bit of sort of playroom. But uh, where you actually pinned it, it's just designed, the pins are just there to kind of keep it from shuffling around too much on you. But you can move the yarn or move the fabric around as you need to to kind of keep that nice neat edge going all the way down. You just want a little bit of the edge of your scarf showing over the top. I feel like that makes it nice and neat. And of course, at some point, you're going to run out of thread as you're sewing. So you're gonna just, before you completely run out of thread, just make a little knot like we did before when we were sewing the seam. Try to do it on sort of the inside of your, you know, pull it to the inside turn of your lining. Make your knot on the inside and then as you continue, you can bring your new knot in through the inside of the lining and as you sew along, it'll just end up disappearing between the lining and your scarf. Don't overthink it, <laughs> just, Straight back and forth stitches, nice and simple. Stop every so often to make sure it's not bunching up on you or getting pleated and just take your time. I've stitched the long ends first and I like to leave the ends, the short ends for last because that way I can sort of tuck in any extra fabric that may have sort of shuffled out one side and I can just sort of squish it around until I get a nice even fold and then I can just continue sewing right around the corner. Same thing, I want to keep the fold of my fabric pretty much just below the edge of my crocheted scarf. And there you go. Now your scarf is not only pretty, it's extra cozy too. We hope you enjoyed today's tutorial, a little bit of sewing and stitching, all the sorts of things that keep us in stitches here. We'll see you soon on the Jada and Stitches show. Until then, stay safe, stay crafty, stay cozy, and have an awesome week. Bye everyone. Hi everyone. This is Mama and Stitches. Thank you for watching. Here are a few other videos you might enjoy. Don't forget to subscribe and you can also click the like button and the bell. Thank you. Have a wonderful day.